Before we begin, let's just make one thing clear. Indian is not an ethnicity, not a race, and definitely not a religion. India is currently the second most populous country in the world behind China, but it's not going to be that way for long. It's predicted that at current population growth rates, India will become the world's most populous country for the first time in only five years, in 2022. For babies born on the earth today, they probably won't ever remember a time in history when India wasn't the world's most populous country, as opposed to our generation and before, who always remember China as being the world's most populous country. India's population currently sits at around 1.3 billion people, and for perspective on how astronomically large that number is, the U.S. currently only has about 25% of that number at around 300 million. So for every U.S. American citizen, there are over four Indians. Astonishingly, when the rest of both North and South America are included, India still beats them out population-wise, seeing how the combined population of the Americas is only around 1 billion people. Clearly, there's a lot of people living there, and it's very easy for us living in the Western world to forget just how much their population dwarfs our own. Now, the reason for me saying all of this is that there's an immense amount of diversity in India, let alone the Indian subcontinent. Imagine all of the ethnic, linguistic, and religious diversity of the population of all of Africa stuffed into a country the size of Argentina. India is obviously not a homogenous country, but most people don't know just how truly diverse it is, and when you include the rest of South Asia, the situation gets even more complicated. South Asia, which is frequently referred to as the Indian subcontinent, is usually defined as the countries of Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, the Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. The western half of Pakistan is occasionally thought of as more Middle Eastern because their population has more in common with the Iranian-speaking peoples of Afghanistan and Iran, but we're going to include them with the rest of South Asia for this video. India has around 11 main ethnic groups, the largest of which being the Hindi-speaking peoples of northern India, that are very difficult to classify by ethnicity. There are, however, hundreds, maybe even thousands of smaller and much smaller ethnic groups in the entire region of South Asia, but for the most part, people of South Asia can be put into a few very large racial groups. The first peoples to have inhabited South Asia are believed to be the Dravidians. Dravidians are a racial group that live in the southern portion of India and also have ethnic groups scattered in the neighboring countries. They're believed to be related to the Melanesian people of the Pacific, such as people from Papua New Guinea, Fiji, and the Australian Aborigines. Because of this, they have features that are quite distinct from any other group of people in India. The majority of the rest of the region is inhabited by speakers of Indo-European languages known as Indo-Aryans, being unrelated to the Nazi concept of the Aryan race, of course. The Indo-Aryan people migrated into northern India around three to 4,000 years ago, most likely traveling through Iran and Afghanistan into the subcontinent. They mixed with the native Dravidians of India, but retained their distinct languages and culture, which is why the Indo-Aryan languages of India are actually more closely related to the European languages than to the much closer geographically Dravidian languages, believe it or not. Indo-Aryan people inhabit the northern portion of India, all of Bangladesh, the southern part of Nepal, eastern Pakistan, the island chain of the Maldives, and the southern part of Sri Lanka. There's also a small Indo-Aryan ethnic group called the Rohingya people that are related to the Bengalis and bleed over into neighboring Burma, but that's a topic for another day. Overall, various Dravidian groups make up around 16% of India's population and around 13% for South Asian as a whole, although this proportion is falling fast with birth rates in northern India far outpacing those in the south. Dravidian people generally are much darker in skin tone and hair color than the Indo-Aryans to the north and have different facial features of wider noses, larger lips, and a more prominent brow ridge. Indo-Aryans mostly have lighter skin, less coarse hair, and more Middle Eastern sort of features. Now, it's very important to realize that skin color and facial features 
are on a spectrum in South Asia, meaning that anyone from any part of the region can have any of these traits, and some Indo-Aryan people from northern India could actually be darker than some Dravidian people from southern India. This is because of the extreme mixing that has gone on in the Indian subcontinent in the past few thousand years, with pretty much all Indo-Aryans having at least some Dravidian ancestry, and vice versa. It's important to note that judging what South Asian people look like by looking at celebrities from the region will definitely not give you an accurate picture as to what the average South Asian person looks like. It's actually very advantageous in the entertainment industries of India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh to have very fair skin and more European-looking features, so it's not uncommon to not find a single Indian actor or actress in Bollywood that has dark skin, despite large portions of their people having such skin color. Even Nina Davaluri, who is famously the first person of Indian descent to win Miss America in 2014, acknowledged that she would probably not have gotten very far in Indian modeling because her skin is too dark. The Indo-Aryan groups that are on the fringes of the subcontinent, such as the Assamese in the far northeast of India, or Nepalis in the far north of the region, generally have anywhere from 15 to 20% admixture from the neighboring East and Southeast Asian people, since Tibet lies directly to the north of Nepal and India, and Bangladesh and Assam are very close to the border of Southeast Asia. There are even states in Northeast India that are inhabited by Tibeto-Burman people, or Thai-speaking peoples, who appear to be more closely related to Southeast Asians than other South Asians. Also, Western Pakistan is inhabited by the Baloch and Pashtun people, two ethnic groups that are of Iranian descent, being more closely related to the Persians of Iran. There is also a relatively small group called the Brahui people, who are the last remaining Dravidian-speaking population in all of Pakistan. The rest of the country is almost entirely inhabited by Indo-Aryans, such as the Sinti people, and Punjabi people. The largest group in the region by far would be the Hindi-speaking peoples of northern India at around 600 million people, although as mentioned earlier, they can be divided into many smaller sub-ethnicities such as the Biharis, Rajasthanis, and Chhattisgari people, and they probably wouldn't really appreciate me all that much calling them all the same ethnicity, but really I'm no expert on the subject. Other distinct Indo-Aryan groups in India include the Marathis, the next largest people, who inhabit the state of Maharashtra which contains Mumbai, or Bombay, the largest city in all of South Asia, the Gujarati who are most famous for being the main merchants and traders of India, and the Bengali people who are divided between the Indian state of West Bengal and the independent country of Bangladesh, with most Indian Bengalis being Hindu, and most Bangladeshis being Muslim. The Punjabis are tricky because nearly all of the Punjabis of Pakistan are Muslim, and they far outnumber the Punjabis of India, who are mostly of the Sikh faith, which, no, isn't a part of Islam or Hinduism, but a distinct religion of its own. The main Dravidian groups are the Tamils of southern India and northern Sri Lanka, the Malayali people of Kerala, the Telugu people of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, and the Kannada people, that's right, Kannada, of Karnataka. The Tamil people in Sri Lanka have had a long and bloody conflict for independence from the Sinhalese-dominated government, who are actually the only Indo-Aryan group that is almost entirely Buddhist. There's also a large minority of mixed-race people in South Asia, known as the Anglo-Indians, getting their namesake from their paternal English ancestors. When the British troops were first stationed in India in the late 1800s, they didn't bring their families or wives since they had a life expectancy of only around eight months, and as such often had affairs and even sometimes married the native Indian women from many different parts of the country. Mixed-race marriages were later deemed illegal by the British government in India, but by that time, the damage had been done. Over the past couple of centuries, they created their own communities, intermarrying within their own group, creating their own ethnic identity. Today, they number up to one million people, which may sound like a lot, but this is only 0.1% of India's population, and are scattered throughout the country, with many more having moved abroad to other areas of significant South Asian diaspora, such as the UK, Australia, Canada, the US, and Southeast Asia. Other much smaller groups of foreign extraction in India are the Zoroastrian or Parsi people, who are of Persian Zoroastrian origin 
and the Sidi people, who are of Southeast African Bantu origin and were brought to various regions of India as slaves by the Arabs and Portuguese. Although discrimination based on skin color has historically been quite high in the Indian subcontinent, in modern India, the main distinction is generally not between race or ethnicity, but religion, with many families actually being quite tolerant of marriages between Indo-Aryans and Dravidians, yet the stigma between interfaith marriages remains at around the same since the partition of India in 1947. Because of migration, intermixing, and assimilation, the people of India and South Asia are one of the most fascinating and unique populations of the planet, and one that everyone should learn about, even though I've probably horribly mispronounced every name in this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. This has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.